connected. I am an entrepreneur, a passionate Toastmaster, and an ardent learner. Thank you all for joining us today. But before moving ahead, we would love to know from where are you joining today? Please put your name and the country's name in the chat. Let us know the place from where you are all joining today. Come on. Let me see some responses. You all can type in the chat box the place. Okay, we have our special guest, Kajetan Barito, joining from Kuwait, Judith from Kenya, Zimbabwe, Lydia from La. Okay. This. Oh my God, the responses are just filling up the chat box. George from Argentina, Michelle, Trinidad and Tobago. We have Lydia joining from Las Vegas. Mark joining us from Uganda. So we have people joining from all over the globe. It's amazing, wonderful. Thank you so much for joining us. But it will be nice if I can see the same excitement on your faces. Can you all please turn on your videos? Let me see how excited you are to attend this special session. Come on, everyone. It will be great if you can show your smiling and exciting faces. <laughs> Thank you. So dear friends, Leadership Mastery Series is a podcast series in which experts and leaders from various walks of life inspire all of us through their wisdom and experiences. And this time, we are here with an entire series focused on the ultimate global keynote challenge which will be held on February 14th, 2020, February the 4th, sorry, 2024. If you have not heard about that ultimate challenge, then let me tell you, dear friends, it's a global platform where you can step onto the virtual stage and showcase your prowess in oration. To help you with that, we will be having these special sessions as part of the Leadership Mastery Series and learning about various skills needed to grow as a professional speaker. And today, we will be talking about technology. The advent of technology and social media has had a significant impact on the way people communicate and public speaking is no exception. In order to reach your audience and become a dynamic and valued professional speaker, you should acquaint yourself with the top tech available. And it will not only get you more exposure and help you do more with the time you have, but also have a powerful impact on the audience. Technology can improve the overall quality of your presentation in many ways. And today, our special speaker is going to talk more about it. So get ready with your pen and paper. Are you all ready? Are you all ready to learn how you can become an effective speaker by using technology? Let me show some react. Let me see some reaction, dear friends. Are you all excited? Are you all ready to learn? Yes. If yes, put yes in the chat box. Let me see if you are all excited today. Are you all ready? Come on. <laughs> I guess you all are busy and getting ready with your pen and paper. So without further ado, let me introduce the founder of this great initiative who will be interacting with the special speaker today. And you all can post your questions in the chat box and the, your questions will be answered during the session. So let me invite Brahm Memon. Brahm Memon is a creator and a pioneer. And it is very apparent in everything he does. He is the circuit breaker, one who disrupts convention and the status quo. He has set records in the Toastmasters world and the Global Leadership Impact Summit is his brainchild. He is a constant inventor with a twist. He is an initiator, spending time on novel undertakings that stretch the boundaries of current thinking and practices. 
he sets benchmarks that are way ahead of the crowd and the rest have to grow fast beyond their limitations to catch up. His coaching and training business is an example of his ingenuity where things are so different it leaves even the most seasoned leaders grasping for straws. He's a coach and a trainer in the space of personal mastery and leadership. His interest lies in unleashing the creative potential of humanity. So ladies and gentlemen, let us welcome the, the founder of this great initiative, Brahm Mimon. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Aswati. Great introduction. Thank you very much all for coming here today. The videos are, you can now put on your videos. Uh, it was uh, set to not, not have videos on, but you could, you can switch your videos on now. So please do switch on your videos. It'd be good to see your faces. If you're a Toastmaster and you're thinking of doing a project, a high performance leadership project or your DTM project, and if you've been in Toastmasters for a few years, don't think small. You can think as big as you can. And so this is the reason why I've created the ultimate challenge, the, the keynote challenge, because everything that we learn in Toastmasters we should be able to use it outside in the world, right? Would you agree? We are not here to get better, to be better Toastmasters. We are here to get better at what we do outside in the real world. This is an educational organization. This is a place where we learn, relearn, fall flat on our faces, right? And get picked up by uh, our team members, put right back on the stage and we can continue. This is a place where you can do it. And if in the real world, if you fall flat on your face a couple of times, they'll write you off. So I encourage every one of you to join the keynote challenge. If you haven't joined the keynote challenge, most of you have joined the keynote challenge. That's why you are here. I was just looking at the numbers uh, this morning and 175 people have joined the keynote challenge. 175 people. Of course, I don't expect every one of them to submit a, a video, the, the video teaser video. We all know what the teaser video is. If you've been, if you have registered, it's on the website. Hannah, could you put in the chat the, the link to the website for the global keynote challenge? So in a minute, uh, Hannah Schmidt will be putting that link there. So if you haven't registered, go and register yourself to be in the keynote challenge because this is a place where you will learn Fall flat on your face if you want to fall flat. But every week we are conducting a series of podcasts to support the keynote challenge. How can you become better at the keynote, at giving keynotes? As you know, in your level five as well, besides the NHPL project is speak for 15 to 20 minutes, right? Actually, it's 22 minutes, 20 to 22 minutes uh, as, as a presenter, as, as a keynote speaker. And so if you're wondering how to speak for 20 minutes when you are hardly speaking for five to seven minutes and you are getting, getting it tough, right? This is the place to really stretch yourself and understand what a keynote speech is. So all the training is being provided. And today our guest is Kajetan Barreto. Now, why Kajetan, Kajetan Barreto? You know, I only have people here who are ready to serve from their hearts. And Kajetan Barreto is one of those people who serves from the heart. He's not here for status or privileges and, and accolades. He's here to serve. And, and I love this man because of that's what he does. He's, uh, he's, he's served at the Toastmasters fraternity for a long time. He's got a, a YouTube channel with uh, almost 10,000 followers. Most of them are Toastmasters and uh, quite a number are non-Toastmasters. Aswati, if you can put uh, the link for... Uh, Kajitan's uh, YouTube channel in the in the chat right now, and we will be putting that uh, YouTube channel link on a regular basis throughout this meeting because uh, Kajitan wants to get to the ten thousand mark and beyond. And and so please register for his YouTube channel, subscribe to his YouTube channel because in that channel, I mean, I sometimes when I get stuck with my technology and I'm very good, I go to that channel and look at. What's what video can help me? Sometimes I want to send Kajitan a message saying, hey, help me, especially with the YouTube live videos. When I initially started the YouTube live videos, I didn't know how to do them. It was Kajitan Barreto that helped me out. So ladies and gentlemen, 
He's a certified trainer, public speaker, behavior assessor, and a passionate Toastmaster. He works as a group manager, project management office at Al Sayer Holdings, based in Kuwait. Kajetan achieved his distinguished Toastmasters in June of 2020, 2020, and he was awarded the prestigious District Toastmaster of the Year for 2018-19 during the DTEC 2020. Ladies and gentlemen, please help me welcome Kajetan Barreto. Thank you, Bram, for that warm welcome. Swati, if you can uh, please spotlight. Thank you. All yours, Kajita. Thank you. When Bram asked me to talk about technology and how you can use technology to improve your keynote, public speaking, I was trying to figure out what kind of points or notes that I should be sharing with you today. I remember three years back, I was invited by an university here in Kuwait, because at that time, COVID had hit and all the professors had to start delivering their lectures online and they were lost. They were used to standing on a stage, classroom full of students, 100 students and delivering their lectures. And suddenly they are in a small box and they do not know how to engage with their students. So I created this presentation. I delivered it to them, a one hour presentation. And I pulled this uh, two days ago to share the similar thing. And I, I wanted to see what has changed in the last three years since I presented that. And I'm proud to say nothing has changed. Whatever I delivered to this university three years ago, I'm going to deliver to you today, except for one point that has changed. And I'll mention to you what that point is. So let me share my presentation. So here I'm going to talk about how you can be effective as a presenter, keynote, workshops, whatever you want to do. And if you are taking part in this challenge, how you can make sure that you are not left behind. The objective is not to use technology to get ahead, but to make sure that technology does not leave you behind. What do I mean by that? There should be a kind of a baseline that when you come, people should be able to hear your message. They should not be hindered by your audio, your network, your video. They should hear what you have to say. And if you win the challenge, it should be based on that which means the technology has just helped you. It has not put you behind. If Bram, for example, in his goodness, invited all of us to Canada and put us in a hotel and, and did this keynote in an auditorium, then the onus of managing the technology would be with him. He would have to arrange this location. He would have to arrange the audio. He would have to arrange the sound, everything. You just have to go and tell your story. But when we are in online, especially in this example of keynote, or very soon, if you are going to take part in your speech contest at the club, area, division, district, and you want to become the world champion of public speaking, then the technology, and if you are going to do it online, then the technology becomes your responsibility. As mentioned, why am I here today? What is the specialty? What makes me special to talk about this subject? So first of all, I have been deeply involved in sharing my knowledge. I have a YouTube channel, as mentioned, called Tech for Toastmasters, where I've created um, more than 200 YouTube videos. By the way, it started as a HPL project, uh, Bram. I wanted wow. to create 50 videos uh -huh. uh, to share with the community and mm. suddenly it blew up and everyone was saying, no, oh, we need, uh, we love, and then it became like a passion. Besides that, I have many other hobbies, but also I'm a certified trainer. So I'm going to talk about uh, four things, that is the tools and technology that you need to use, uh, the communication style that you need to adapt online, uh, any kind of online etiquette and 
some various presentation techniques that are available like the one that I'm doing right now. You notice I'm not doing a PowerPoint uh, sharing, right? I'm talking to you at the same time I'm sharing the key points with you and that becomes more engaging. All right, so let's move on. As I mentioned to you, my objective is not to make you go out and buy technology or tools. My objective is to tell you what is involved and then you look around what you already have and see what needs to be enhanced. Talk to your friends, talk to your coaches, talk to your mentors. Is this good enough for a keynote? If not, what could I add? Maybe one thing or two things without investing a lot of money and achieve that balance to make sure that technology does not leave me behind. Do put your questions in the chat. We will be addressing them through the moderator later on. So when it comes to tools and technology, in my opinion, the order, the importance or the sequence of tools and technology to be effective online is first of all, your connectivity. Whatever happens, you must make sure that when you are delivering your keynote, you have access to the best possible internet connection. And I've seen many times whenever my friends, they want to deliver their, let's say, international speech or in the speech contest, they will go to their office and deliver it from there. Why? Because that's the most stable internet connection available to them. If not, if you have something, access to good connection, or if you don't, then you need to see what is it that will make sure that you don't get disconnected in the middle of your speech, or the connection is so bad that your video doesn't appear properly to the audience. So that is for me, the first starting point, have good internet connection. Once you achieve that, the second thing you need to do is focus on the audio. And you notice that there is a huge microphone right in front of my face. And that is because uh, that is for me the most important aspect of any uh, presentation or tutorial that I deliver, that my audio has to be clear. Because audience will forgive you for bad video, but if they can't understand what you're saying, and if your voice is not pleasing enough, they will tune off very quickly. So when it comes to audio, I mean, what are the options available to us? Most of you all would be using your phones, perhaps, or your laptops, right? How many of you all, if you can tell me in the chat, have something for your audio other than your actual device? If you are using a laptop, are you using anything other than that to enhance your audio? I would like to see what is it that you all have or don't have. Okay, so some of you all are using lapel mic, Sharon is not using anything, Anna is using a polycom system. Okay, so most of you all don't have, it looks like uh, some of you all, but most of you all are using purely your laptop. And in fact, in my opinion, laptops have progressed quite rapidly in the last two, three years, especially because of this pandemic. So the latest uh, laptops, especially the MacBooks, have excellent audio. As long as you are in an environment that is quiet, and in fact, let me give you a tip. If you can deliver your speech in a small room that is full of furniture and curtains and beds and so forth, that's the best environment. Do you know why? Uh, why, why do people put all this kind of uh, sound uh, 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 boards all around the room? That is because to avoid the reverb, the sound hitting the wall and coming back and creating that kind of a reverb. So if you're in a room, let's say in a bedroom, you have a lot of furniture, you have sofas, you have beds, you have curtains, they all absorb the sound, which means your sound becomes clear and crisp. So whenever you are trying to deliver your speech and you are limited, just with your 
uh, laptop microphone, for example, try to find a place that is small and it is filled with uh, furniture. And you could be quite okay with that. If you cannot control that environment, then you need to think about um, like, let's say somebody is using lapel mic, somebody is using Anchor A500, somebody is using a Bluetooth set. So they have identified that they need to enhance their audio. So for example, I'm using here a microphone that is uh, placed right in front of my face. It's called a dynamic microphone. So if you have seen anybody doing podcasts, if you have done, uh, heard about Joe Rogan, the famous podcaster who creates uh, uh, videos with famous personalities, he's literally, his mouth is right next to the microphone. He talks like this because he understands the importance of audio and the importance of keeping the microphone as close to your mouth as possible. And in fact, now, if, if you listen to me, probably my sound, my audio sounds better than what I sound in person, by the way, because uh, it has that uh, DJ kind of uh, quality. But the moment I stay move away from it, you will notice that it doesn't sound as good. So this kind of microphones are more designed to be when you are going to deliver a training workshop sitting in one place. But what happens if you are going to deliver a keynote and you want to stand and deliver? And that means the distance from the microphone to your mouth it is increasing. A couple of solutions. Some of you are using Bluetooth. It might work. Bluetooth tends to be a bit uh, kind of uh, on the uh, laggy side. But if you notice, I'm wearing something like, uh, oh, oh, here it is. So this is a wireless microphone. And also you will notice that in the last one or two years, this kind of devices have become very common because people have realized that uh, companies have realized people need this kind of devices. And what it allows me to do is follow the same principle, keep the microphone as close to my mouth as possible. So as I'm walking, the distance from my mouth to my microphone is not changing. Right? So whatever microphone you do use, whether it is a dynamic, whether it's a condenser microphone like this, the objective should be to keep the microphone as close to your mouth as possible. So you might have seen uh, whenever you are a call center, for example, what do they do? They put a headphones and the microphone is sitting right in front of their mouth. What's the objective? Because it should pick up the sound from their mouth and eliminate the surrounding sound. So that is how you will uh, use it. If you are, as I said, limited to using your laptop, find a quiet place and keep the laptop as close to your mouth as possible. That way the microphone can pick up only your audio and not the surrounding sound. Any questions on audio, how you can, uh, what are the... I, you actually have a sound lag there, Kajit, on yourself, apparently. I have a sound lag? Yes. <clears throat> At least that's my experience. Uh, Aswati, is that your experience? Is there a sound lag? Uh, it's fine for me. Fine for, okay. Yeah. Maybe my connection. Go ahead. Okay. Let's move on to the next item, which is the video. And when it comes to video, again, you are looking at my video through a camera. Most of you all will be using the um, camera from your laptop. And again, once again, the, because of this COVID, because of people working from home, the manufacturers of laptops have improved their cameras. As I mentioned, they have improved their audio, they have improved their cameras. So to a large extent, you will be able to manage with your laptop uh, video. But in case you are using one of the older laptops, you might consider connecting to a webcam. Once again, there are plenty of options available when it comes to webcam. In fact, let me show you even this today, this is my setup, by the way. So you can see my microphone. Uh, that's my, it's not a webcam, that's a camera. And that's a good thing about uh, technology today is 
most of the digital cameras, if you are passionate about digital cameras, most of the cameras today come with a webcam function. That means you buy the digital camera, maybe to take with you for your holidays, but then you just put a USB cable and becomes a webcam and a high quality webcam. So if you are considering investing in a camera for your travels, for documenting your life, consider looking for a camera that has this USB uh, webcam function and you will get the best possible like this quality from the um, camera. Okay, let's move on to the next thing. The next thing is the light. Most of us do not pay enough attention to the light and where the light is placed. And sometimes the light could be as simple as uh, buying a nice LED bulb and placing it in front of your uh, laptop so that it lights up your face properly. And again, what I want to highlight to you is all manufacturers have got into the act that people are working from home and they need good light, good audio, good video. So you'll find if you go to your supermarket, you go to Walmart, so you'll find plenty of uh, small LED lights and you can strategically place them somewhere in front of you. The only advice I have is don't place them right in front of your face, especially if you're wearing glasses because then they'll reflect in your glass. So you have to keep them a little on the side. That way people can see your face clearly. The camera itself is not as much important as having good light where you are sitting or standing when you are delivering your speech or keynote. And finally, the device. The device is the least important uh, equation in your, you can even use a um, mobile device. You can use a cheap laptop. Out of this, in my opinion, as long as you have good connectivity and good audio, the rest are incidental. You can deliver an excellent speech with these two elements. Then just pay enough attention to make sure that your video is okay, your light is okay, and then you have a decent device. So that's from the technology point of view. Shrenik Shah asks, does dynamic mic better or one like call center headset with mic? It all depends on the situation, what you want to do. As I mentioned to you, if you are going to deliver something in one, from one place, like sitting, and you want to deliver your workshops or your, you want to create YouTube content, this is the best thing to do. But if, you are, if I'm a presenter, I want to stand and deliver, this will be not a good thing. You'll have to look at something like that. Let me switch to that microphone just to give you an idea of how that sounds. Microphone is... Okay, so now I'm, my, the microphone that I'm using is this. Do you see the difference in the audio quality? Yeah. Right? But the advantage is as I move around, it doesn't matter. Wherever I am, you'll get the same consistent audio. It doesn't uh, change because the distance from my mouth to the microphone remains constant. Let me change back to my other audio. Okay, now I'm back on my dynamic microphone. Now, when it comes to communication style, I want to, you to focus on the camera position where you place if you are using a laptop let's say and you are using the laptop camera where should you place the laptop it should be at your eye level and sometimes that's the biggest challenge that we have we place the laptop on the table and therefore your camera is looking straight into your nose and that's not very flattering so ideally find one or two boxes and keep your laptop on top of the boxes and then you can speak uh, to the if you are using a webcam find a small tripod stand or something like that and place the webcam at your eye level. Mine is slightly above eye level, but that's the way I prefer it. And also it's very difficult to practice this. Even people who are experienced get trapped into this, that when you talk about eye contact, we tend to look at the screen where the audience is. We want to see their reaction as I'm doing right now. But when I do that, 
you can see that I'm not actually having any eye contact with you, right? So whenever you're delivering something and you want to focus and you want to convey your message, avoid the temptation of looking at the screen down. Always look into the lens of the camera and that's how you create eye contact when you are delivering your keynote or your presentation. And of course, it requires practice and it's very easy to do. Start up Zoom, start practicing, record, and then you can replay it, share it with your friends, get their input, get their feedback. And this is the only one change that I made from three years back. Three years back, there was no AI. I mean, there was AI, but there, it wasn't as prevalent as it was today. Today, we have tools like Udly. Anybody here has used Udly? I'm a Udly ambassador, so I'm very passionate about this product, how it can help us to improve our public speaking, how it can help us to improve the way we speak, the speed at which we speak. So Irfan has used Udly, great. Valerie has used Udly. So the object, good thing about Udly is anytime you want to practice something, you can fire up Udly and you can deliver your speech. The advantage or the difference is you get instant feedback. You don't have to record it, send it to your friend and say, hey, can you check it? Can you give me some feedback? You should still do that, by the way. But an AI tool that can quickly analyze your speech, quickly transcribe exactly what you said and, this, and then give you feedback where you could have said something better. Where did you use crutch words? How many crutch words did you use? How many pauses did you have? What is the rate of speaking? Is it ideal? Is it too slow? Is it too fast? So this kind of matrix will help you to fine tune, polish and deliver your keynote. So don't uh, hesitate to sign up for Udly. It is currently free. It will become subscription based at some point in time. But till now, you can use it. Yeah, and the, uh, as Irene said, there is one in the Toastmaster panel that is a different version of Udly, but it's the same product, and it is available to you for free. Tobacco, I love Udly because I'm lazy to write my speech down. I use the transcript and refine my speech. I sometimes do that too. I will say what I have in mind, but I don't have the time to write use the right words or right phrases. So I see what I have in my mind in simple English and say, hey, can you trans change this and use a more professional tone? Of course, you can do the same thing. Uh, you can take the transcript. And if you want something even more professional, maybe even go to chat GPT and say, can you convert it into a professional tone? So AI tools have become very prevalent. Use them. Because I remember uh, somebody saying that, uh, AI is not going to take away our jobs. People using AI will take away our jobs. So start using AI. In terms of online etiquette, I think most of us have got used to it. At one point, we used to struggle. Am I muted? Am I unmuted? How do I, am I audible? I remember, am I audible was one of the top keywords of 2020, if I'm not mistaken. Um, Understand when to switch on your camera, when to switch it off. And time management, you will notice uh, on my screen, at least when I switch on this, you will notice there's a timer going on. So I'm always aware of how much time I'm spending. So try to manage, not just rely on the timer in the meeting who is assigned as a timer, but do your own time management in what technology is available to you. And when it comes to presentation, you will notice that I'm using a virtual camera. This is what I'm doing. So I'm, I'm creating a camera which contains my, my face as well as some additional information which has been brought in from a PowerPoint. So this way you can, if you are delivering a keynote and you have some key points, and Brahm does this all the time, he doesn't use uh, PowerPoint sharing or screen sharing. He uses tools like which creates virtual cameras for him. So you can bring in information 
just the right, just the points to keep you on, on pace. So you should invest in it. Uh, it's, it doesn't cost any money. It's all free tools, most of them anyway. The one which I'm using is free. It's called OBS Studio. It just requires you to learn something. How to do it? How can I put little extra effort to make myself more engaging to the audience? Um, also, recently PowerPoint introduced an interesting uh, feature, and I created a, one of YouTube video. If you want to find out how to do that, is that when you are creating a PowerPoint uh, presentation, it's called Cameo. You can insert your camera inside PowerPoint. That way, when you're presenting your uh, PowerPoint presentation, you can decide where the camera will be. And in each slide, you can move your camera to a different place. So you're presenting. At the same time, people can see you. So you don't have to essentially um, create a screen sharing where your video is in a small box in the upper right corner, and people lose track of who, who you are. So PowerPoint with camera is another feature. You'll find the video on my YouTube channel. I created it just one or two months ago. Try to use that feature also. If you're using Zoom, of course, there is a feature called PowerPoint as a virtual camera. Have anybody tried this? Ashwati has used, I think. Yeah, so you try to experiment with that. Uh, what it does is it allows you to use um, a virtual camera or a virtual background with your PowerPoint. So this is another thing. And if you and this works well with Zoom. On the other hand, if you are using uh, Microsoft Team, they have an amazing feature called Present Live. So when you are having a PowerPoint presentation, explore the and you are delivering to let's say your colleagues or to a team using MS Teams, then that is the way to do. So these are all of the options available to you when it comes to creating engaging presentation. So that brings me to the end of the presentation part, which is the technology, how to present and what are the tools available to you. Um, at this point, Bram, if there are any questions, either from you or from the ed audience, I'll be more than happy to take it up. There's a question in the in the chat there by Dinesh Kumar Paul. I don't know if you answered that one. I uh, can't remember. Uh, uh, Dinesh or... Kumar asked how device will allow to use dual microphone parallelly. So I think he's trying to uh, ask me a question. How did I switch from this microphone to the other microphone? Uh, is that your question, Dinesh? Dinesh, are you, are you there? You can unmute yourself, Dinesh. Thank you. No, as I can see, you are using the uh, multiple microphone. One is I, Bluetooth, which you clipped with your coat, and another, I, I hope, believe the USB connected. So, Parallelly, both will working or switch to one by one. Okay, so let me show you how, if I can share my screen. Yeah. Mm. Let me re remove your spotlight. And remove the audio. So you will be able to see, this is my Zoom screen, right? What I have done is I have connected both the microphones to my computer. And you know, in the audio section under here in Zoom, you can choose which microphone you want to use. So whenever I want Sorry, to use the microphone. To us. I, we can see only your profile picture. Uh, okay, the, okay. We can't see the screen share you're trying to show. Screen share, you cannot see. Let me do a screen share just to demonstrate this. Okay, now I'm sure you will be able to see the menu. Yes. All right. So this is the audio menu. So as you can see, you can connect as many microphones as you want to your computer as long as it is supported. In my case, this microphone is connected via USB and this 
microphone is also connected by another USB. So I have two USB devices, but in Zoom, I can switch. So if I want to switch to my lapel microphone, I will simply click here. And now you are hearing my audio from my lapel microphone, which is the Rode uh, Wireless Go. But if I switch to back to my Rodecaster, this is my big microphone, and that is what you are seeing now, hearing from me. So that's how you can, you can connect as many microphones as you want, but then when you need it, you simply switch in Zoom which microphone the audience is hearing. And then I think, uh, Dinesh, what you mean is you cannot have both the microphones on at the same time. Yeah, though. that is true. Only one can be active. You, you'll hear an echo otherwise, uh, you know, per, a permanent echo and, and ruin the whole system. So, so you can only have one microphone on at the same time. That's why when uh, Dinesh, when people are joined with two different devices, one device has to be silent and, and, and mm -hmm. with, with no audio connection at all. Otherwise you hear that echo, right? So it's like that. So while uh, people are thinking of any questions or if they have any questions, the other thing that I want to ask Ajitan is, one of the most important things is we have people from all over the world with different types of skin tones and, and they don't know how to use their skin tone with the background and the lighting on the faces. And sometimes it's totally washed out and sometimes we can't see their faces depending on the skin tone, where they're from and the background they're using. So if you can throw some light on that, that's very important, I believe. Yeah. So one thing is that, uh, of course, as much as possible, if you are forced to use a virtual background, usually the problem comes when you try to use a background. Let me change my background and show you what I mean by that. Um, in fact, I, I have never used virtual background, but uh, just to give you an example, I will set it up. And what happens is when you use a virtual background, whether it's an audio or video, you get all this ghost kind of things, right? And the problem is, the quality of how, much, how the virtual background will be rendered depends on a couple of things. One is how good is your laptop or your computer? You need a very powerful processor. And even though I have one of the best gaming laptop, you can see myself disappearing here and there, right? And that can be quite distracting. But in such situations, if I have to use virtual background, what I suggest you all do is, have a background that is very plain in my case the background is all um, it's definitely not plain correct so so if i do something like this uh, it could be, by the way, white cloth or uh, green cloth is preferred. I, I no normally tell people, if you can just go to the market and hang a green cloth behind you. And now if I do the same virtual background, but in Zoom, there is an option called, I have a green screen. There is actually a screen option that's called, I have a green screen. And if I do mm -hmm. that, and I change my virtual background to whatever it is, you will notice now, first of all, even my chair comes, uh, becomes visible, you know, that is, you don't find that uh, distracting elements of things suddenly disappearing. So this would be a good investment if you have to deliver presentations and you want to use virtual backgrounds like this, but at the same time, you don't want to create that uh, ghost. The second thing is to make this work, you need to have good light light that uh, flatters your skin tones and in my opinion the best lights are the led daylight balance lights as much as possible have those lights in front of you uh, to give you that clean look and this is how you will manage uh, delivering with a uh, virtual background uh, tom has raised a hand yeah. would you like to uh, ask the question Uh, you are muted. Uh, let me. Uh, you have to give them an option to unmute. Try I now. I have more of a comment than a question. But when 
Toastmasters said that we could no longer meet face to face, they said, quote, all you need is a laptop. And I think a lot of people did not recognize the level of quality that the camera or mic might have in a laptop and became disenfranchised because of the audio was so bad. And they stopped watching Toastmasters because they even dropped their membership because they didn't like the new way. What can we do to get those people back? Because your session today is bringing to focus all the reasons to have the best audio and camera equipment possible. But many people don't know that the camera and audio that came with their laptop is inferior. Yes. First of all, I must admit I am not uh, the best person to build membership. <laughs> if that is uh, the uh, uh, question but also at the same time i'm not a real fan of only online i would say if you want your members back get them back into a physical room that's what we do by the way here in Kuwait. we are focusing on having physical meetings because this was the only option for us during the peak of pandemic but it isn't it is an additional feature it's an additional feature to reach out to a global audience that's fine but if you are only talking from a toastmaster perspective i don't think that we should be holding only online meetings if you all can meet in a physical place so that should be your first goal if you are building membership <clears throat> get them back into the room get them to practice their skills in person what we are talking today is more about global audience, reaching out to having clubs that, where members join from different countries because they want to practice a different kind of skill. It's not the only skill anymore, right? It's one of the skills, which is online and reaching a global audience. But from a Toastmaster perspective, our first, uh, in my opinion, the, our first effort should be to get members to come back to a physical location to practice our skills. I'm in my 45th year of Toastmaster membership. I no longer Great. am able to drive. So I am totally dependent on remote viewing. Uh, I believe that there are numerous Toastmasters who are no longer active that have tremendous amount of knowledge and wisdom to offer. And we should do everything under the sun to encourage the remote viewing. And what you're doing today is very important. Yeah. Tom, um, uh, yes, thank you so much for that. <clears throat> you know, I, I am a proponent for online meetings. That's why we all, I, I belong to a club that is totally completely online and you've been to that meetings uh, several times. And uh, the reason why we are throwing the global you keynote know, challenge is to have a global audience come online. Of course, now remember, I, I'm my home club, which of which I'm not a member currently, and I've been a, I haven't been a member since the pandemic, but I call it my home club. They have hybrid meetings and most of their people who, who go to that meeting are physical. There's like two or three people perhaps online at any point in time. They got 45 members, a very successful club. Of course, I can say that because it was my club. <laughs> so, and, and, and so <clears throat> it all depends. Uh, there are a, a number of clubs, uh, especially during the pandemic that went totally online, undistricted clubs. And also Tosmas allowed some all clubs to be districted as well if they wanted online, which is what we did when uh, I was coaching a club with two members. And there was no way of reaching anyone ever uh, during the pandemic. And of course, nobody could. And so we went online and we went permanently online. And we found that I could reach audiences from all over the world. In that club, we had members from 15, 14, 15 different countries. In the current club where I am, where which I created, Leadership Speak, we have... 16 countries, members, uh, 53 members, no, 50 members currently, three left, net left. So talking about equipment for, for sure is that make sure 
that even if you have a cheap equipment, is how it's placed in front of you. So that's why this uh, keen, this particular podcast session is known as Simple Technology on Steroids. It's about the placement of your equipment, where you're going to place your equipment, how you're going to move, and so on. And because I come from Africa, I do understand there's a lot of people from Africa. So it's the biggest growth area currently. And quite a number of people from Africa are remote. They are online. And how do they get online with simple, cheap technology? And, and yet be able to stand up and speak. So, you know, how you raise your computer to what level, eye level, how far you're going to stand from it, and, and so on. And, and how you're going to sort of move around a simple bulb in front of your face that lights up your face properly even, and, and and go into a room where, you know, in the, the background, there's not too much happening so that you can, you don't have to use virtual background because you don't have a green screen. You can't use a virtual background. So go into a room that if you're ever for darker skin tone, make sure this background isn't very too light. The cameras kind of, you know, adjust very well. Our cameras are like $30 cameras in our laptops and so on. Or if you're, if you're from uh, uh, lighter skin tone and 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 the skin, and the background is still again lighter and you get washed out and so on and the clothes that you're wearing so there should be a distinction between the clothing the lighting and the background and we have that every day in our rooms and where we are so those sort of small adjustments and for Tom you're seeing you know there's a lot of people who are of that age where they don't want to travel and they they have that experience can join of course using simple equipment and taking the time to make sure that they raise the camera or the computer and talk, and and sort of not move too far away from from the from the laptop if worse comes to worse if, even a $50 for North Americans uh, a $50 bluetooth microphone would help you all right if worse comes to worse so but we are right now Kajita is doing the best scenario for keynote speaker for keynotes as well so we are talking about that as well so he's he's focusing on that aspect at the moment i hope i've answered your question tom uh, and we can talk later more on this and uh, all the different things that we can possibly do to get back people online if they want to be online but physical is of course uh, a great way uh, to practice your public speaking as well in leadership mm -hmm. speak we are completely online come in come to leadership speak and practice your speaking online back to you kajitan sorry about that yeah Thank we you. have a question i think raised hand from george george would you like to answer the question yeah let me let me rephrase it i'm in south america and i suffer the connectivity issues that you mentioned that you had in africa and many people have that issue the principal bottleneck is the upload speed that you have in ADSL and cable connections. So people don't realize, but they put the camera in high definition and then they pretend that their voice and the image in high definition go side by side. And what we advise people, I'm, I'm the PE of a club that has international audience. And what we advise people is to use the settings for the camera in not in high definition unless they're speaking professionally and they have a good connection. And also, if you go to preferences in Zoom, the third last option is general video, audio, whatever. You go through the list, the third last is statistics. And it has three, it has four tabs. One that says overall for audio, for video, and for screen sharing. And it's telling exactly which is the bottleneck that you're having and the type of problem that you're having. You can test that before you initiate the session and then when you initiate the session and when you initiate screen sharing and you can test in a session with yourself, just sending your content to Zoom and you can see if the content that you're sending and the audio that you're sending will present uh, problems. You have to do that test on the same day of the week and at the same time that the event live is going to do, but it is, it, it is a good alternative. The, the other thing that we advise people is maybe during that time of the, your presentation, switch your connection to use your phone, your, G, your GSM-4 or whatever it is connection using a tether cable. So you're not subject to wireless interference and you'd have symmetrical mm -hmm. bandwidth. Most cable and modern and uh, most cable and ADSL companies sells you very low bandwidth for upload. Because typically you say, I want a video, you say, get a video, and then the video comes. So my connection, for example, is 150 download and maybe three or four upload. So you have to upgrade that. You can upgrade that. You pay a little more to your cable company and you can get that. But the principal thing is people complain that they cannot hear the audio of others 
who are at home. People who are in offices don't have a problem. People who are at home suffer a lot from that problem. So everything that you said is extremely useful. I would add, go to the statistics because that will tell you exactly which, which is the, the bottom. Maybe, maybe, you, maybe you can share that the screen. I am at home and in a situation where I cannot share video and I cannot share it, but maybe, maybe you could or, or there could be a, something for another session. Thank you so much and compliments for the screen. That was brilliant. Yeah. Thank you, George. So, so basically what uh, George was talking about is try to understand where is the problem that you're facing by looking at this. Uh, you know, this is great. You should definitely look at this and see where you are having a problem, where everything looks good, uh, where is your upload, how is your download for audio, video, and this is what, uh, so I got some um, error just right now. So you could look at this as you are playing, you can check the statistics to see whether you are doing uh, okay or not. But obviously, as I said, when we are talking about giving keynote, if you want to be part of the keynote, and that was really the focus of my presentation today, what is it that you need to do? You need to ensure that your message is clear, right? For normal uh, Toastmaster meetings, you can manage with uh, not using HD high definition, trying to compress everything. But if you want to really focus on winning a keynote, giving the best TEDx type of uh, keynote, for that specific meeting, you have to somehow go and find the best connection and the best audio to make sure that technology, as I said, does not leave you behind. I hope that is clear. We There's have also... one more question. Yeah, go ahead. We have a question from Sugumar. His question is, uh, the microphone which you are using, it is to deliver the speaker's audio. What is the device to hear what others are speaking, especially in a meeting which, which is two-way? And he cannot see that if you are using any headset to hear others. Uh, okay. so, yeah, so I am using normal speakers um, connected to my computer. I have some desktop speakers, but if I really want to, if I make want to make, uh, especially when I'm evaluating and I want to make sure I listen to each and every word, then I do put on the headphones like this. Uh, so this allows me to listen to the online audience through my headphones. So I do have that but they, they they do tend to be a little uncomfortable for a long period of time so that time i'm listening to you all on my normal desktop speakers i have some speakers connected to my computer and, and uh, sukumar what, i i use the desktop speaker but you know what it, it's a like <laughs> let me tell you 15 year old speaker uh very cheap speaker but it, it's it's a it, it's got a good bass to it uh, and that's what I listen my audio through rather than the, the computer speaker. I mean, I've got a yeah. small, tiny desktop computer, actually, it's not even a laptop, which has got very tinny output sound. So I use a very old, old, old speaker, but it's good. It's adequate because it's not for music. So it's adequate for voice, right? So if you want to do an external speaker, don't go and, and spend millions of dollars. <laughs> you can get something very cheap. Or thousands only for, of dollars. <laughs> only for your voice. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> only for your voice. And for your voice, if it's not for music, a, a cheap, good external microphone with a good, a little, a little bit of bass in it. Uh, Gajjan, what's your recommendation for that external mic? Uh, sorry, uh, audio source. Just, just uh, for voice. For the speakers you're talking about, right? Yes, yeah. Yeah, uh, I'm general. not the right person because I always tend to buy the most expensive items. <laughs> My, mine is actually a reference speakers which I use by musicians. So, uh, there you but go. you know, if you go to any uh, supermarket, you will get this uh, computer speakers which have yeah. uh, decent, you know, twenty dollars or thirty dollars. You'll get really good uh, speakers. And, and you know what? The other thing is what's what's amazing about Amazon. You know, and Amazon is everywhere. I know Amazon is in India. I don't know where are you, Sukumar? Are you in India or uh, Middle East? The, and then Amazon. if you go on Amazon, there's so many reviews, right? Just read the reviews, you know, and and don't look, read the reviews about oh the music was bad. Of course, you don't want to listen to music if it's just for Toastmasters and for you know just the audio that you want to hear somebody speak better than the tinny sound from your laptop, right? So like that. I had just a follow up question. This is to visit. Uh, uh, the, the microphone that you're using, 
so whether it uh, observes some noise around us so is it helping you to reduce the noise around or it is just a, a device that will give you the enhancement version of your audio so the thing about this microphone is this are called uh, as dynamic microphones the feature about dynamic microphones is they pick up uh, audio only from very close proximity so if you have ac running or if you have cats meowing in the next room it will not pick it up most of the time right? unless the cat is really screaming for his food uh, so what it does is it just focuses on your voice and it kind of eliminates all this um, ambient noise as we call ambient it noise, yeah. right so mm -hmm. But if you were to use this kind of microphone, these are called as condenser microphones. They're very sensitive. They pick up all kinds of sound. But again, you can eliminate most of the ambient noise by keeping it as close to your mouth as possible. So that way, the microphone immediately adjusts the gain so that it compensates for the loud noise that you are making. And then by default, it will sort of hide all the surrounding noise. Ajijan, what brand is that, that lapel one? This one is Rode. Just a uh, road as well. Okay. Yeah, it's a road wireless. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't know whether it will focus, but uh, yeah, it's called Road Wireless Go. And and they are the most popular for lapel one. And they are the most popular one. Yeah. And so the, the next popular to wireless. that is the DJI. You know, it's it's in this box yeah. here, right there. You know, DJI microphones. These are also and, equally good. Yeah. And uh, yeah. So and I and I use DJ when I'm when I'm doing my keynotes. Right now I'm using a desktop microphone. Uh, it's not as sophisticated as Kajetans. It's a very old. This is again a 13 year old microphone. Still works. It's called Samsung G Track. The, the Samsung G Track is the, they've come up with something new. That's the old. The new one is almost 250 dollars now. This one I bought for 100 bucks. So on. But what Kajetan is using is probably 500 bucks. I don't know. Maybe more. I don't yes. Know. But it is also like we can hear Bram very clearly, right? Because he has arranged his room for this. So probably uh, nobody is allowed to come in this room. I don't know. But he has. No, yeah. You know what, Kajetan, if I may interrupt you, initially when you say, you know, choose a room where there's a bedroom and there's curtains. That's where I'm. I'm in my bedroom. There's beds, Absolutely. there's clothes, there's curtains, there's sofas, you know. So it deadens the sound completely. And of course, nobody comes in this room. It's just me. And that's the very reason I don't have a, like for, for my studio, I don't use a separate office where, you know, it's, it's empty and the, the noise is echoing on the walls and all that. No, right. And I have a green screen behind me, right? I'm in my bedroom, but there's a green screen right behind me. So that's what I'm using. And oh, that is the, the point that I was trying to make earlier. Try to manage your surroundings that will overcome many of the technological limitations, right? So he is saying that he is sitting in the bedroom. We can hear every word clear and crisp because all the furniture is dampening the sound and yeah. we are focused only on his voice. In fact, uh, you, you know, I, I have one, I was watching one guy who does this voiceovers, voiceovers when they are given a script to read and send it back. So what they do is they go into the closet and they record it. Yes, I've seen that. Yes, <laughs> they, they go in the closet and they record the audio because that will dampen everything except their audio. So that is <laughs> what we mean by controlling an environment yes. without spending anything, right? So in this case, he just moved into a, a bedroom and his reasonable microphone sounds like a top end of the professional microphone. Now, there's a question here here at, uh, by Charlie Howie. I'm just scrolling a little bit up. When you deliver a professional speech live, do you have any support staff? Right now, as you can see, I have Aswati, who is the moderator, and she's moderating, and she started the meeting, so there was support, yes. And uh, I also have Hannah Schmidt, who is going to be posting about, uh, something about the Global Leadership Impact Summit. Actually, Hannah, if you could post the link to, if you haven't registered for the keynote challenge, there, Hannah is going to post uh, a link into the chat right now. See that? So yes, I do because I speak professionally. Uh, this though, this is not a professional. Uh, this is only for Toastmasters. So and I still have support staff, and they are Toastmasters as well from my club, and they are learning the the, the skills of uh, podcasts and and things like that. And they are excited about what I do, so they are here to uh, serve. Is like I'm serving you. I'm not getting paid for this particular right. So this is I won't call this a professional presentation yet. We use 
everything that I have professionally is being used here in this venue so that you get the benefit of, if you want to become a professional, if you want to move from being what you're learning in Toastmasters, take it out in the world and really become a great keynote speaker, that is the, the, the technology I'm using right now, that's it. And of course, I keep upgrading. And when we started three years ago, of course, I just had my laptop and I would put a laptop on a stand, you know, and it was a Mac computer, uh, 15, 2015 computer. And Zoom was very archaic in 2020. And uh, the camera was 720p, but it was a good camera because it's, it's the Mac environment. It's pretty good. And I used it for a couple of years. And then I said, okay, since we are online and I'm... Uh, I want to just present online. I had made a decision. I said, upgrade my my equipment. Now I've got two huge screens, just like Kajitan, ring light, spotlights. I do it in my bedroom so the, the sound is deadened, so I don't buy any extra stuff to deaden the sound and put panels around in the room and things like that. So professional the speaking, if you're doing professional speaking, and if you, depending on the type of speaking that you're doing professionally, you may want to have somebody or not. Like, for example, Kajetan has one of those devices where he presses the button and he changes things, he changes the microphone, changes the, well, for microphone, he was doing through Zoom, but his camera, right? He just pressed the button and they changed the camera to something else. So those sort of devices, if you're speaking professionally, somebody sitting at a desk not too far away and manipulating all those buttons and changing scenes and whatever, sure, absolutely, depending on the type of speaking that you're doing. And uh, just to add to that, for me, uh, obviously, I do all of these gadgets, but I do have a quality assurance in my house. My wife, she's also a distinguished <laughs> Toastmaster. So whenever she hears something uh, or something, I'm doing something wrong, I will hear a knock on the door saying, change this. I, I think she's in the um, meeting. I don't know whether yes, her video is working. But she's here. And oh, one okay. of the advantage of having that is that whenever I want to upgrade my technology brand, uh, then she becomes the recipient of that uh, <laughs> technology. So she also has a pretty decent setup from my uh, uh, hand-me-downs. Uh, and I would encourage Priscilla to be in this uh, keynote challenge. Stretch yourself, Priscilla. Thank you. you. You're welcome. Uh, there's another question, I think, here. Uh, the screen that you're using, is it a foldable Elgato screen? Um, and I don't yeah, know if it is a that, foldable that's... one, but it is not Elgato. I, 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 we don't have Elgato in Kuwait. You can order Elgato; it's equally good. But this is something similar. It's, it allows me to fold it down and just uh, keep it on the side. Uh, what, what I'm the green screen I'm using is a is a green cloth, uh, and there's a two stands, and, and and you know one of those things where I can hang hang it. So. And it came, it came as a green screen, but uh, you can buy, like Kajitan said, from the market, a green yeah. bed sheet, which is what I started uh, with 10, 12 years ago, just a green sheet, right? Uh, a bed sheet. Stuck it to the wall, make sure it was straight, clear. Flat, and, and without so any creases. Yeah. Not too many creases. I mean, you can have slight creases and then the computer will be able to discern that. These days, the computers are far powerful. Enough. If you have an, a more older computer and it's not able to, then you will have to stretch the fabric and have more a uh, bit of lighting as well on the screen itself, uh, depending on the quality of your computer. Great questions. Anything else? Over to you, Kajetan. Anything else for you? Uh, Aswati, if you can post to Kajetan once more, I mean, people have been posting his uh, YouTube video there, but if you can uh, once more post his YouTube video, I mean, channel, yes. please. Subscribe to Kajitan's YouTube channel. You know, he's, he's being a great, great service to Toastmasters fraternity for a long time. Uh, he's here to serve. He's, he's not making money off that. He just <laughs> wants to get to that 10,000 people and more. Uh, so please subscribe to his channel and watch the videos. They're very useful videos, by the way. They're not just any videos. They're done professionally, very well done videos on all sorts of uh, technology. And if you want to become a great keynote speaker, You'd better look at some of those videos. Okay. Thank you. What you could Charlie Howell has asked a very interesting question, and I like to address that is, and this is one of the things that I talk about when I give workshops on Udly. And this is especially relevant to people like us from India, Middle East. We tend to speak with an accent. 
And when you are delivering a keynote, a speech in front of an international audience, how do you make sure that you are understandable to the global audience? Use Udly. Let me tell you why. Because what Udly does is when you fire up Udly, I don't have enough time to actually give a demo. I could have easily done it. But you just log into Udly, start and start speaking. What it does is the first thing it will do is it will transcribe your audio. Whatever you're saying, it will transcribe mm -hmm. it. And that will give you an assessment of whether the AI is able to understand what you're saying, which words it cannot understand. Remember this, most of these AIs are trained on Western data. In this case of Udly, it's trained mostly on the American speaking English data. That's the training that it has received. In future, they, they might adapt it to uh, regional accents. But today, if AI, the Udly, can understand what you are saying, it means the American audience can understand what you are saying. So that's one of the tools that you can use if you, are, uh, if you speak with a heavy accent and you want to correct the accent, that would be. Of course, you can. the ultimate would be to sit with and pay for a speech coach who will train you. But that can be very expensive very quickly. But this is a free tool available, highly recommended. Just load Udly, start speaking, look at the transcript, and then you will come to understand whether your speech is understood by this AI tool mm. and where you need to refine yourself. <clears throat> also, for those who are worried about this, uh... Being a, this being an international contest uh, challenge, really, <laughs> rather than a contest, but yeah, it's like a contest, right? Is that we will have a panel of judges from all over the world, not, right? And not just restricted to North America. I live in North America, but we'll have uh, judges from North America, Africa, Middle East, India, spread all over. And uh, we'll have a, uh, we, we're still building the judges panel. And so we will have a, at least 12 to 15 judges from all over the world. There are certain criteria. The criteria won't be like Kajetan said when he began. It is not, let me just go back to the, exactly what he said. Not about helping you to go get ahead, but not to get not to get lost behind. So that, that was just like, a, that blew me away, the way he said that. And so this was the, the judges will be looking for to begin with the technology. Like last time, a couple of weeks ago, when we did a presentation, someone was saying, Cameras here and cameras there and flashing cameras, you know, moving cameras. And no, they're just not totally interested in that. They're interested in you and how you're presenting. Of course, Toastmasters basic foundational things like voice and how you use your voice modulation, how you use eye contact, right? How you move in this little square. And it's a TED style speaking. So it's not like one of those two over dramatic things. You're like, oh, my God, my brother, you're an idiot. No, you, you know. We don't want that. That's not a TED talk. That is over dramatization that Toastmasters have got into. We should get away from that. So a TED style, 18 minute conversation where you are passionate about something and it actually comes across that passion. That's what we're interested in. We're interested in is flashing lights and technology moving around and all those things. That's why we said simple technology on steroids is how you use your technology to enhance yourself without buying too much other stuff because we have people from Africa, we've got people from India, you know, and we, we have basic uh, incomes, right? Some of us, or our incomes are tied to other things that we, we need to feed ourselves and our families. So that is a challenge. And of course, some of you want to become professional speakers by all means. I've uh, built my uh, repertoire of technology slowly. You know, every now and then I'll invest in something because uh, of uh, online presence and technology. My goal if I may share this and don't get overwhelmed with it, is to speak to 30,000 people in three years in a stadium. And it could be online. So I'm practicing for that. It's my goal. I mean, your goal could be whatever it is. And uh, kudos to you. If you have a big goal, fine. If you have a goal that is, it, should, it would be big for you, whatever that goal is, right? It should be big for you. It should be something that stretches you. It could be speaking to 50 people in a boardroom, right? And if it stretches you, that's your big goal. So... Uh, I've been in Toastmasters for 27 years, so my big my big goals are a bit bigger, for sure. And hence, I do bigger projects. And I would encourage you to try a big project in, in your HPL or your 
DTM project. Try that, okay? Over to you, Kajetra. Thank you. Yeah, my goal would be to reach 100,000 subscribers so I get the Yay, nice awesome. simple like from uh, <laughs> YouTube. <laughs> yeah, definitely awesome. possible. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions? Uh, I think we are reaching the end of time anyways, and I think the questions they have uh, said to put it down. Uh, let's see. Lydia Norman says even native English yeah. speakers. So that's a very interesting uh, note also that even though you might be native speaker, mm. you do yeah. need to look at uh, other things like vocal variety, pace and tone. And also for those things, you have very interesting uh, analytics from Udly if you want to experiment. And by the way, there are additional uh, AI tools that are now coming because generative AI is exploding like anything. Uh, and it is all open source, right? So people are adapting and uh, creating different tools. Um, so feel free to experiment with them and use them to enhance your delivery. I have used it and I found whenever, before I started using Udly, I found that I was speaking too slowly. And then with constant practice, I could increase my sp uh, space so that it is within that uh, band that is what I should say, acceptable to the audience. Awesome. Uh, Shanik Shah says, Fortunate to deliver 250 webinars during the pandemic. Wow, 250 webinars, congratulations. Is that professionally, Sherik? Sher Don't read the name here. Shrenik Shah. Was it professionally or was it in Toastmasters? We'd like to know. Put a, put a note in there for us. Uh, Lydia Norman, by the way, is a member in Leadership Speak, my club. She just became a member last week. Uh, and uh, Oh, both. Sherik, thank you. And uh, so, Lydia, I hope we've answered your question about that. And uh, use Udly. I think I've, I've never used Udly. Now I'm convinced totally, Kajistan. Thank you so much. I'll be getting into Udly to find out how I am doing. Currently, I'm actually conscious of how I'm pronouncing my words because I want to become a great keynote speaker, right? So I'm consciously, look, as I'm speaking right now, how am I enunciating my words for an international audience? So that's the game I'm playing. Everyone has a different type of game and every all games are relevant. There's not, no, in, nothing invalid about the game that you want to play, okay? We are all Toastmasters. We are learning at different levels. Please sign in into the Global Leadership Impacts, uh, sorry, Global Keynote Challenge. Hannah, if you can put for the last time that uh, uh, link. Thank you very much for the, if you haven't still signed in. So Hannah will put that link in as well. The link is right there. I think as well, we love your feedback, how we did well today. How did Kajitan do? How did I do? How did the whole one and a half hours, uh, what did we do? Was it good for you? Could, can we improve? So Hannah is also going to put in an assessment form for, for the audience. Please, I know most audiences don't fill that in. Please, could you take five minutes to complete that form? It really is very helpful to us to improve our service. It's just a free service, right? We are doing this free. The, the keynote challenge is free. Uh, we are spending my own money for the website and all that. But for you, it's free because you're Toastmasters. And I'm trying to improve myself by experimenting. So you're helping me we are, and I, we are helping you. So it's a circle. And so please fill in that form so that we know whether Kajitan did well, I did well, can we improve in the future and so on. So Hannah, if you can please... But then, yeah, there it is now. If you can click that link and let us know how we are doing. I would encourage every one of you to fill that form. Thank you so much. Over to you, Thank you, everyone who words. has uh, put in the comments also I was reading. Thank you so much for those words of encouragement. Feedback is very important, as we all know. To improve ourselves, to improve yourself. So I appreciate the feedback. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, we will stop the recording uh, and uh, this session is over. I'll be here still. If Kajan wants to hang out for a little while as well, uh, just uh, encourage him to. But we are 